Hey guys, it's Justin, and today I'm going to be showing you a Lightning Web Component tutorial on how to do asynchronous form validation. Uh, in the tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, promises, we're going to be talking about Lightning Record edit forms, and we're going to be talking about um, toast messages as well. So with that, uh, I have the, a contact record here on my demo org. Uh, and you can see on the right, we have the async form validation. Uh, so what you can see here is you can see three standard fields, first name, last name, email. They're on every contact record. And um, what I can do is when I press this update button, we're going to validate uh, through a promise to see um, whether this email is valid. The criteria for this is if it ends in .com, then the email is not valid. Uh, so if I press update, we see the spinner icon and then we get this toast that says an error saving record, email cannot end with .com. So if I change this to maybe .org, you'll see that now this updates fine. Again, you see the uh, spinner state and then you see this approval state. Uh, so we also have heptic feedback built into the, um, built into the component using um, some kind of rudimentary state management. So with that, um, I wanna talk a little bit about the example. What we're doing is we're just doing a simple string matching or not matching, but we do an ends with function and we're using that to reject the um, promise. Uh, I think in real world scenario, you maybe would want to post to a web server and that's where you'd see uh, the, the true use case of this. But for the scope of this tutorial, we're just using a sleep function. And um, furthermore, anything that um, can be done with just standard standard uh, validation rules inside of Salesforce should be. So if you're going to do, make a REST call out, that would not be, you'd not be able to do that with, um, with a validation rule. But uh, for the purpose of this, um, we're able to use a validation rule. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump into the development org. Okay, so what I have here is I have the a fresh uh, Salesforce org. And I think the first thing that I wanted to do is show two settings that are gonna greatly increase your efficiency in Lightning Web Component development if you're uh, new to this. Uh, the first one is gonna be in session settings. And what this will do is, um, we're gonna get scrolled all the way to the bottom, but if you scroll pretty much back to the top, um, there's a setting here enable secure and persistent browser caching to improve performance. What this is gonna do is it's gonna, gonna cache data, page layouts, and um, it's gonna be hard to see your um, changes that you've made, uh, and you're not gonna be sure when you've made them until the caching is, is gone. So at least in a sandbox org, I'd recommend disabling that uh, for all Lightning Web Components. And the next one is gonna be, if you search for um, this lightning components, this debug mode, um, we're gonna go ahead and enable that uh, for uh, whatever user. So we've done that here. And with that, uh, let's jump into the code. Okay, so I'm inside of VS Code. First thing I'm gonna do is create a Lightning Web Component. Uh, I'm gonna call this async, um, what am I gonna call this? Async test is the component name. You could call this anything. Uh, I'm gonna be using this. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna expose this and we're going to add uh, targets. and the specific target we're going to add is um, the lightning record page. So let's just go ahead and add that. Just gonna go ahead and deploy this. Uh, and what that does is that allows us to put this component on the contact record. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this as we don't need to edit that anymore. 
Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of the HTML here, uh, and as well as the JavaScript, and we're just going to talk about this line by line. So uh, inside the inside the HTML, we have a template tag and Next, we have a lightning card. Uh, this makes this just makes it um, look nicer and just give it a title of async form validation. And then what you'll notice is you'll notice three um, three kind of templates. So we have a base um, and each template uh, section represents a state. So we have this um, this first template section here which is going to be the base state. Uh, we have the next template, which is gonna be the loading state. And then we have the final template here, which is the finish state. And so we're just gonna be um, using JavaScript to control these using the if true directive. But um, what we have inside of here is the um, a div with the class um, card body inner. And if we go inside of Salesforce to a contact record, um, which I can show you here, uh, what you'll notice is that each, I don't know, I'll share this late. Uh, what you'll notice is that each um, kind of lightning card has this little um, kind of space. It's about a, um, I don't know, about a mouse, mouse length of, of padding. And this is just the uh, SLDS um, formatting. Uh, then we have our record edit form. We're gonna be passing in the record ID from JavaScript. Um, I just have this ob object API name is contact. Um, if you were going and using uh, maybe a custom, uh, custom object, maybe you'd wanna pull the uh, custom objects API name, but this is fine. Uh, and then we have an om submit handler. We have these three input fields. So first name, last name, and email. And then we have a button which has some styling. Um, and I think most critically, it has the type of submit. The next template is the loading. Um, the loading stage um, or state and we're using a lightning spinner with just alt text of loading and a large, large sarge, it's a large size, and um, it's pretty self-explanatory there. And the last thing we have is the finish state. So we have a div that wraps the absolute center. So this just centers the approval icon, and then we have an approval icon. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this. Uh, but the next thing we have is we have um, the JavaScript. So I'm gonna go over the imports here first. So we're importing lightning element, which is standard with all lightning web components. We're also importing API so we can grab the um, record ID and we're also importing the show toast event. Um, at the beginning here, we need the record ID, uh, which we're just grabbing from API, you know, uh, API. We have the base state, which we're going to set to true, uh, loading and finish, which are set to undefined as these are falsy values. So you no need to, to set these. Um, we have the sleep function here, which we'll talk about in a second. We have a show toast message, and then we have the on submit handler. Um, and then we have this as an async function. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and go over the sleep function first, uh, and then I'll go through some of the submit handler, and then we'll see it all in action. So what the sleep function is, is we're taking in an argument of milliseconds, and we're taking in an argument of email. Um, and then we're returning a promise where we resolve or reject. Uh, we use the set timeout function, which is a standard JavaScript function, and um, we're passing in the function 
if email ends with .com, so this is that criteria, then we're gonna reject this. Uh, otherwise, we just resolve this and we set the timeout for uh, whatever the milliseconds ends up being. I have this set for, for two seconds of delay. Uh, the next thing is the on submit handler. You'll notice the async keyword. Uh, this is so we can use the await function. Um, we have the, we're assigning the form constant to the template query selector in the lightning record edit form. Notice how we're doing this before we set the states because um, the query selector uses anything that's rendered in the DOM. So let's say if I had this, um, if I'm using this query selector after I had changed all the states and uh, what, what was appearing on the, on the DOM was a spinner or the approval icon, then this wouldn't work. Uh, so that's why we're grabbing it first, then changing the state. So we have the base, sets, base state set to false. We have the loading set to true. We await the function of this.sleep. We're passing in um, the email field. Um, so we can grab any field from the form using the um, event detail fields and then um, the email field specifically. Um, then on success, uh, we form sought, we form dot submit this, and that's what updates the uh, contact record. Uh, we set the loading to false, finish to true. Um, but if there's an error, then we use the show toast method, and we set the base to true and loading to false. The show toast being a an event here when we're creating a new show toast event that we imported up above. I have the title of error saving record. Uh, we just pass in the message from the reject um, here. Uh, and we have the variant is air, which makes it red. Uh, and then we have mode as sticky. Uh, and that way then it doesn't just disappear after three seconds. You could have that. Um, you, and you can check the, do, uh, the, the lightning web docs in the description for more information on that. And of course we dispatch the event. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this right now uh, i'm going to go ahead and go to a i'm just going to go ahead and make a new contact record uh, so i know this is a trailhead org and there's contacts available but we'll just go through through this okay so now i'm going to go ahead and create an account that i have the um account record created or sorry i'm going to create a contact now that i have the account record created uh, again, we're going to use Justin Wills, and uh, we'll just, we just won't put in an email. So we'll go here to the contact page. Um, we'll go to the page builder. And as you can see, we have the async test, which we will add here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, save and um, now what you'll see is, um, oh geez, we're gonna go ahead and edit the page now that we have this contact and let's see what I did wrong. Probably didn't save it. So you're gonna add this here. We're going to save and activate it assign as org default, save. Now when we go back, we have this async form validation. So again, when I have the justin.wills at g2technologies.com and I try to update, um, you'll notice the spinner, we get this toast that persists. I can close this though. And if I go to the justin.wills at g2technologies.org, we update, we get the spinner, we get the approval icon that's centered, and you'll notice that the contact records is, is saved. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the source code for this is, is down below, um, on hosted on GitHub. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks and have a good day.